Hello and welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. Now, slider cards are very popular right now, so I thought I would do my take on a slider card where I hide the track so you don't see it on your card. I'm actually creating three examples today. Two are slider cards and one is a pull tab card. So there are many ways you can do these cards. So this is the pull tab card where you pull the little tab and the sentiment shows and the little bike rider moves. Here is a slider card where you just shake back and forth and the bike goes back and forth and here the little space boy goes back and forth. So I'm going to show you all of these today along with some tips. However, if you've never done a basic slider card, I encourage you to check out a video that my friend Kelly Marie Alvarez did. She is the owner of Lawn Fun. I will link to her slider card video here. The beginning of this video shows the basics of slider cards, and it is really well done, so I encourage you to check that out, and then come back and watch this video. Okay, so I'm going to start by coloring the images I want to use on my card. I thought this little girl looked like Lila, so I decided to use her on the bike with our dog Foxy in the basket. So I went ahead and stamped them and I did some quick coloring on them. Not going to share the coloring because it takes a bit of time and I didn't do anything fancy. You could do any coloring that you want. Now I do want to die cut these with the coordinating dies and here's a little trick. I've shown this before, but I thought I'd show it again. Sometimes people have a hard time lining up the dies with the stamped images. This is one trick. Just die cut the die from a piece of scrap paper line it up with your stamped image. So I'm just lining it up so it's perfectly around it. Then I pop the die into that little opening, just pops right in, and then I tape it down and die cut that. That way I can be sure that it cuts perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the little dog up here. I'm going to put the negative space around our little dog, pop the die into that little opening, and tape it in place. This does take the extra step of creating that negative space to create that opening, that guide, but it gives perfect results every time. So I'll go ahead and die cut this and show you, and you'll see that I have an even white outline around it thanks to using that trick. But I will admit I don't always take the time to do this. I usually just put the die down, try to line it up the best I can and cut it out. But you'll notice that I do kind of have an uneven cut. The white line is thicker on one side than the other of this little girl. But really I don't usually care too much. But I wanted to share that tip if you do have trouble lining up the dies with stamped images. Okay, so now I have all my little pieces. I actually don't use the boy on the card. I am taping the little girl onto the bike seat and I taped the little doggy into the basket. After I've done that, I'm just making sure there's nothing sticky on the back with my anti-static powder tool. You don't want anything to be sticky when you make a slider card because it may stick shut. So you'll see me use that powder tool often. Okay, now for the design that I'm making today where I hide the track, I need to put like stilts on her, little extenders. So I cut two pieces of white scrap paper, putting strong adhesive on the top of it, and I'm going to glue this to the wheels. This will allow me to create the slider effect, but you won't see the slider track. Now if that doesn't make sense, just stick with me and you'll see in a moment. But creating this little stilt for the die cut really makes a big difference. And I'll show another example of this later. Okay, so I went ahead and I let that dry. And I'm going to use that anti-static powder tool again. Just want to make sure there's no adhesive showing on the back. So there we have our little die cut with the stilts. If you're creating like one image, this has two wheels. So if you're creating one image, you really only need one stilt. I'll show you that later. So I'm going to start with the pull tab example because that happens to be my favorite. Kind of makes more sense to me to have a pull tab for them. I've cut a piece of white cardstock to be about five and a half by a half inch. And I'm stamping a sentiment all the way over to the right. So part of my sentiment will be on the front of the card and part will be on this little pull tab. So I'm gonna create three little dots before the word beautiful with a black pen. I love having this hidden sentiment on the pull tab, but you could just skip that and have a tab that's plain if you want. Now, if you look at all of my examples, there is a stitched rectangle on the back that all of our elements fit on, and it's smaller than the note card so that the note card shows around it. Now, I created this with a Lawn Fawn rectangle stitch die. I think it's about three and three quarters by five inches, so it's a little bit smaller than my four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. I cut this from white cardstock a few times and also from green cardstock, and I'll be using all of those pieces today. 
I'm also using the Lawn Fawn Slide On Over Die Set. There are all these different slider track elements that you can use to create a slider card. But keep in mind, you could always cut your own track by just cutting two long lines parallel to each other and create a thin, slender rectangle shape. So you can cut your own if you want to, but boy, do these dies make it easy. So on one of those stitched rectangles, I am taping down this little slider track die and die cutting it from the bottom edge. You wanna make sure there's enough room on the bottom for some foam tape. Now this element is only gonna be on the bottom of my card, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it with my Tim Holtz trimmer so that I have a smaller piece so that we can hide this entire track behind our green grass. Slider cards usually sh show the track, but I wanna hide it today. Okay, so now I have my two pieces here and it's time to start putting glue down. Now the adhesive that I use for this is some craft foam. This is 3M craft foam. You can use foam dots if you want to. I just cut a thin strip of it to put above the track and below the track. But you wanna make sure that the area between the two pieces of foam tape that you're putting down is wide enough to put this little pull tab in. So I'm gonna lay that little pull tab down so I can make sure that my bottom piece of foam tape fits below it. Now you don't want it super tight. You want it to have a little bit of wiggle room so it slides over very easily, but you wanna make sure that it is close enough that it doesn't kind of go out of control. So I'm gonna put that piece down too. Now normally I put anti-static powder tool along the edges of the craft foam, so none of that adhesive kind of catches on the track, but I forgot to at this point and it turned out to be fine. Now I need to cut the green piece to cover this track. So I put little marks to make sure that I put my grass border die above that area. So I'm putting the grass border die above those little pencil marks, and I'm gonna run that through my die cut machine. Now I have a grass border that will hide that track, which I think is really fun. I don't really like seeing the track on my, uh, my slider cards for some reason, so this is a fun way to hide it. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the little track down on the bottom of my background piece, and I'm gonna make sure I have my pull tab inside of it between those two pieces of craft foam. Lining it right up on the bottom, and you can see that that little pull tab goes back and forth nicely. Now it is too long, but I like to start with a longer piece and figure out how I need to trim it. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit off this side, and I will show you how to kind of make sure that this pull tab doesn't come completely out in a moment. Now it's time to add our little girl bike onto the pull tab so that it slides on that little track. So I've cut a little piece of foam tape and I'm putting it on the pull tab right at the end of the track. Just making sure it still moves and I'm going to put the stilt of the back wheel right on here. Now remember if you had a smaller die cut with only one stilt or one little piece sticking out, this would be easier. Now I'm putting another piece of foam tape on the stilt of the other wheel and gluing that right onto that foam tab. And watch, when you pull the tab, she moves right across. No problems at all, you wanna make sure it moves smoothly. If not, make sure to use your anti-static powder tool or move the little pieces of tape, but it should work fine. Now I want to hide that little track. So I have my craft foam tape again. I'm putting a long piece along the bottom and a piece on the ends but you do not want to put it up on the top there because it would hinder her from riding her bike across the card. But before I put the grass piece on top, I need to stamp the rest of my sentiment that will show on the front of the card. So I'm that, stamping that with black ink and adding this piece right, right, right to, the, right to the bottom of that foam tape. And now check it out, when you pull the tab, she rides her bike across and you see the rest of the sentiment. Now I'm going to add some clouds to the background. I could have done this earlier, but I completely forgot about it. These clouds are from an older Lawn Fawn kite stamp set, and I'm stamping them with the new Lawn Fawn ink color called Minty Fresh. This is a beautiful color. I'll show you a closer look at this color and the other new Lawn Fawn ink colors at the end of this video. Okay, after I've stamped my clouds, I also stamped with celery stick ink from Lawn Fawn, little flowers on the bottom green piece because it seemed pretty plain. Then I went ahead and added this panel to the front of a pool colored note card that is five and a quarter, I'm sorry, five and a half by four and a quarter. And there we have the completed card. I did add a few little white gel pen dots here and there after I finished, but I decided to keep the rest simple. So there you have a pull tab card with a hidden track. 
Okay, so now along the same lines, you can create a slider card where the elements slide back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and make the same card with the slider element instead of the pull tab so you can see how that is done too. Now I'm starting with all the same pieces that I had before. This time I stamp my clouds first onto the rectangle background. I have my slider element and my grass piece with the sentiment already stamped on it. And I also have my little girl on her bike with a dog and I have my little stilts added, just like we did before. This time for the slider element, I'm going to use dimes. You could use pennies if you want to or anything that's circular and flat. And that's what will help our little bike ride back and forth on the slider track. Okay, so I've cut some narrow strips of the foam tape and I'm putting them above and below the track, making sure there's enough room for a dime to slide back and forth on that track. So you're just gonna make sure there's enough wiggle room there. Here I remembered to use my anti-static powder tool to make sure there's nothing sticky that would hold up those dimes from going back and forth. Since we have two stilts on this particular die cut, I have two dimes in here, but I normally would only need one. I also put two pieces of foam tape at the ends so our dimes don't go flying out the sides. I'm adding this to our rectangle background here and you can see that the dimes move freely inside. Now it's time to add our little die cut on this so that it slides back and forth. I have some foam squares here and I'm gonna put one on each dime and then I will add that uh, the stilts of our die cut onto these dimes. Now remember, normally a die cut really only needs one little stilt on it, so you only need one dime. But with this bike, I didn't want her to like crash and burn <laughs> because one of the wheels didn't slide properly, so I thought it was better to do two. So I have a piece of foam tape on each, and now I will add the stilt right onto that foam tape and then I'll put the front stilt on the other, and now she can move back and forth nicely. Now you again wanna make sure to use that anti-static powder tool to remove any of the stickiness that may be showing because we wanna make sure that she slides back and forth nicely. I also put a little foam square at the end of the slider track just so that she didn't back up too much on the card. So you can put little stoppers in the track so they don't go as far if you want to. I find that helps. And remember to use anti-static powder tool on everything just so things don't end up having any stickiness to them. Now it's time to build some foam tape up around our track so we can add that green piece. So just make sure you don't put any foam tape where those little stilts move back and forth. I actually doubled up on this. The reason I doubled up is I wanted to make sure there was enough wiggle room in there for these pieces to go back and forth. So I doubled up on the foam tape and now I'm adding the green piece on top and there you can see she slides back and forth nicely. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add this onto the front of a note card as we did earlier. And there we have another example. A lot of the elements are the same, but this one slides back and forth, whereas the other one had a pull tab. It's nice to be able to have the option on what kind of interactive card you want to do. Okay, I wanted to show one more example, and in this card I do a slider card with a hidden track, and it kind of looks like the element is floating across. Really, it's fun to do, it's a lot of the same things. So I went ahead and created my pieces. I have the rectangles that I created like before. I also created a slider track by cutting the top at an angle and putting the slider track at an angle so that he kind of floats downward across the card. Okay, so I need to create the gray piece that will go on the bottom. So I traced that angled edge and I'm going to use my scissors to kind of create a little bit of a slope on this. So it's kind of curved. Lawn Fawn has a lot of great border dies that match their sliders, but I don't have them, so I couldn't use that. But I would encourage you to check out the border dies that go with their slider dies. Before I assemble the slider, I want to stamp the background. I stamped some planets and stars with some white pigment ink so that it was a little bit subtle in the background. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do around our little space boy, so I kept it simple with the white pigment ink. I also added little stars with a glitter gel pen just to have something that kind of catches the eye so you can see that when you tilt it in the light. Now it's time to put our slider elements together. I'm doing it just like before. I'm putting a piece of uh, foam tape at the top and a piece of foam tape at the bottom leaving enough room for a dime to go back and forth. This time I only needed one dime because this is a small little space boy and I doubled up on that foam tape this time just so that it had some more room to move. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add this on the bottom and you'll see that the dime moves back and forth nicely. Now I did want to add my sentiment to the front of that gray piece. So I stamped you are out of this world with Versamark ink and added some white embossing powder and heat set it. To give it some sparkle, I sprayed it with a shimmer spritz and set it aside to dry. Now I'm putting some foam tape squares onto the dime and this is what will hold our little space boy onto the track. Now I want this to be able to look like he's kind of floating up above the little moon that we're creating. So I used a piece of acetate. I just saved some thick acetate from some packaging and I am just cutting a small rectangle. And I'm going to put the bottom of the rectangle onto that foam tape on the little dime. So that is what will hold our little space boy onto the dime. So I'm putting that right down and then I will glue the space boy to the top of that acetate piece. If you don't have any acetate that's nice and thick, Hero Art sells some that is wonderful for this trick. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a strong adhesive to adhere the little space boy onto the top of that acetate piece. I used some tape for this because I felt it would hold it nicely. And by the way, Lila made a space boy into a space girl by giving her pigtails. So be sure to check that out on my Instagram account. So you can make this boy or girl whatever you want. Okay, so now he's taped onto the acetate piece and look at he kind of floats around on it. So much fun. So this is just like before. I created little stilts before out of cardstock. This time I used acetate, so you can't see it at all. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish drying the shimmer that's on this gray piece here. And I'm going to put that on top of our slider track, which you notice I put my cutting board into the adhesive. I'm going to go ahead and add that right on top and check it out. It looks like he's kind of floating above the ground there. So I thought that would be really fun. So think about it, you can use your acetate to just kind of make your little slider piece stick out a little bit so you can hide your track, the little slider track. I'm using a glitter gel pen just to add some accents to the moon there and I'm gonna go ahead and glue this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. And I did decide that I wanted to add a little bit more color to it, so I colored and die cut some planets to glue onto the background. So that is another way to create a slider card where you hide the track behind something. Okay, I wanted to show you the coordinating envelopes that I created. I used the Lawn Fawn Just For You stamp set. Lots of great little images for handmade cards in here. I stamped Happy Mail and the little happy envelope onto the flap. And I thought that kind of tied it all together nicely. Okay, before we go, I do want to talk about the new Lawn Fawn inks. I'm a big fan of Lawn Fawn inks, and they've come out with six new colors. I am missing the bubblegum ink, so I don't have that to show you, but here are the other five. They're all soft color inks. Now I will say, soft colored inks are tough for manufacturers because it's hard to make them uh, consistent in like a nice solid color, but these turned out fantastic. So we have Minty Fresh, Ballet Slippers, Moonstone, Grape Soda, Peachy Keen, and also Bubblegum, which I don't have. The thing I like about Lawn Fawn inks is that they stamp a little splotchy, but they do dry out and smooth out, given some time, so you get nice, solid images, and they really don't stain your stamps much, so that's a nice perk. Here's a look at all the Lawn Fawn colors. There are now 38 dye colors. I'm missing bubblegum up there, but you can see how they really thought out these ink colors and made sure that they all work together well. And you have like a light, a medium, and a dark, and a lot of colors that work well together. I also have always liked their lobster red. It's a great true red. And there are a lot of beautiful soft and darker colors in this collection. So here's a closer look at them. You can see how the new colors fit in. They also do have a new jet black ink. Well, it's actually been out for a little bit, but it works with alcohol markers. I don't have that one to show you today, but that is the 39th in color. And then they have white pigment ink for the 40th color. I do have an updated ink swatch printout that you can download off of my blog and create your own ink swatch like I have here. So be sure to check that out. It has all these colors. All you do is print, cut them out, and stamp the color swatches. So there you have a look at the new colors. They really are gorgeous, high quality. And the good news is, is Lawn Fawn is now coming out with ink cubes for their colors. They've uh, just recently released four new packs of mini ink cubes. 
and it has different ink cubes in each pack and they will release the other colors in the future. So if ink cubes are something that works better for you and better price point and great for storage, you can try these. And I did find that they stamp just as well as the full pad. And here's a little storage tip for you. See these clamshell packs that the inks come in? Keep those. And what you can do is go ahead and cut it so you have half of it. And then you can use that piece to kind of store them in your drawer. So you can see how the inks fit in there nicely. You just lay this in your drawer and then you can quickly grab the ones you want. Of course, you could keep the package as it is, but I like to be able to just pop them right out and not have to worry about it. I keep mine in Tim Holtz ink cube storage units, but you could use these if you wanted to. So there you have a look at the, the new ink colors and options for creating slider and pull tab cards with hidden tracks. I hope you like this. Thanks for watching. In the middle are two more videos that you might like. Be sure to check out the description below for all the supplies that I used and go to my blog for more photos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.